Miss Lost Track Nine Countdown Net. Pad is clear. Ten, nine, eight. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Go for launch. Dragon, separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jesse Anderson. I'm a production engineering manager here at SpaceX. I'm joining you today from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, which is just a few hours south of Space Launch Complex 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base. Today's Starlink mission will mark SpaceX's 49th launch this year and 187th launch of all time. The teams are currently tracking no issues with the vehicle or spacecraft. Weather and range are both green for launch, and we are proceeding with a T0 of 6.14 p.m. Pacific time. Earlier this week, the team began accepting orders for the new flat high-performance Starlink designed for use while in motion on land. The new panel features a wide field of view and enhanced GPS capabilities, allowing users to enjoy high-speed, low-latency internet while on the go. For more information about Starlink, visit Starlink.com. In more Starlink news, the Polaris program recently announced a $500,000 donation to connect over 100 schools in Chile and Brazil with Starlink. As part of the announcement, the Polaris Dawn crew recently talked to children at the first school in Chile to be connected, be connected as part of this effort. Starlink teams continue to work with nonprofit organizations across the globe to identify communities with the greatest need for high quality internet. The range is green and ready to support liftoff in just under four and a half minutes now. We are preparing or standing by for transporter erector retraction. And the clamp arms, which are just below the fairing, are beginning to open up. Once those are fully open, then the TE or the strong back will begin to retract. And there you can see it moving there very slow away from the vehicle. Now this TE is reclining back just a little bit Right now, but at T0, when the vehicle lifts off, it will move further away to make more room for the vehicle as it lifts off. Stage one, lock flow complete. And there you can see the TE is fully reclined and we got that call out that locks load is complete on the first stage. Second stage locks loading completion will be at the T minus two minute mark. And that will conclude prop loading for Falcon 9. Those white clouds that you see around Falcon 9 is when we vent out the gaseous liquid oxygen at the top of the tanks 
that helps make more room for the liquid oxygen inside of the vehicle. Stage two, lock flow complete. There's that call out that we were waiting for. Stage two, liquid oxygen loading is now complete. Now Falcon 9 is fully loaded with one million pounds of fuel and liquid oxygen. The booster that you see on your screen is flying for its eighth time today, previously having supported Sentinel-6, Michael Freilich, DART, and five Starlink missions. Now after liftoff and stage separation, the booster is scheduled to land on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you, which you can see there on your screen. Talking on it's in startup. That call out means that the flight computers have now taken over the launch countdown. We're now just awaiting the final call from the launch director. LD, go for launch. Great news, all systems are go for launch. So let's watch as Falcon 9 takes our Starlink payload into space. As you can see, Falcon 9 has successfully, successfully lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base, carrying our Starlink payload out into space. We are now preparing to pass through Max-Q. Max-Q. And great timing. We have just passed through Max-Q. Now, we do have a few events happening uh, coming up in just about a minute from now, happening back to back. That is Miko, our main engine cutoff, stage separation, and then SES-1 or the Merlin vacuum engine startup. I'm back, chill. Miko is where all nine of those M1D engines that you're seeing ignited on your screen, they will shut down and that helps prepare the vehicle for stage separation. Once the vehicles separate from each other, the second stage will ignite its Merlin vacuum engine and the first stage will make its way to attempt to land on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you today. Again, we have those three events coming up here in just about 20 seconds or so. Miko, stage separation. Acquisition of a signal, go quest. And MVAC ignition. Separation confirmed. And back ignition. And really cool views there. Bearing separation confirmed. 
awesome views there. We've had Miko stage separation, the ignition of that Merlin vacuum engine, and also confirmation of fairing deploy, which you could kind of see it in the background of your right-hand screen, that fairing making its way back down to Earth. Now, we will attempt to recover these fairing halves using NRC Quest today. On your left hand screen, you can see a view from the first stage. The grid fins that you see there on your screen are now deployed. Those help guide the vehicle back down to its landing zone. And on your right hand screen is a view from the second stage looking at our MVAC engine. So far, nominal trajectories for both vehicles. Again, the first stage is making its way back down to Earth. In just a couple of minutes, we will have the entry burn beginning on the first stage, followed by the landing burn, which is a single engine burn, just a few, just about 30 seconds before touchdown. And again, we are attempting to land on, of course, I still love you off the coast of California today. And today's mission marks SpaceX's 49th launch this year and 187th overall mission. As previously mentioned, the first stage booster supporting this mission previously launched Sentinel-6 Michael Freilich, DART, and five Both Starlink missions. And good callouts that both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Yesterday also marks the two-year anniversary of Starlink Better Than Nothing beta launch. Since then, our teams have been very busy at work. Starlink is now available in over 40 countries around the world, available for businesses, boats, aircraft, and specialty projects. And just last month, we completed the production of our one millionth Starlink kit. Congrats to the entire team, and go Starlink! Now we're just under 20 seconds away from that entry burn beginning on the first stage. You can see the first stage on your left hand screen. Stage one, FTS has saved. And there Stage you, one, entry burn startup. There you can see, and with that call out, the entry burn has begun. This burn lasts about 20 seconds long. Just three of the nine M1D engines reigniting. This helps slow the stage down as stage it. Stage one, entry burn shut down. This helps slow the stage down as it enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. And as you can see, the engines have shut down, which concludes the entry burn. The next burn coming up for stage one will be that center E9 engine igniting for the landing burn in just under, just about 30 seconds from now. While the first stage is landing, we will have second stage engine cutoff one. So you may hear those call outs happening around the same time. Stage 
one transonic. Stage two, FTS is saved. Stage one landing burn. And there you can see on your left hand screen, the landing burn has begun on this booster. Let's watch as it touches down on, of course, I still love you. Landing leg deploy. And back shut down. And awesome Stage view confirmed. of that landing. The Falcon has landed. This marks, orbit insertion. this marks the 149th landing of an orbital class rocket, the 49th launch of 2022. And we also had second stage engine cutoff and confirmation of good orbit. Stage two is now carrying 53 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit, and with confirmation of first stage landing and successful second stage cutoff, we'll wrap up today's launch coverage. If you're interested in following along, we have our nets live on YouTube, and be sure to check SpaceX social media for confirmation of Starlink deploy. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you again soon.